When aviation first began with the Wright brothers, checklists did not exist. But as more complex airplanes were created, the probability of making a mistake and having a fatal error increased drastically. One of the first airplanes to ever have a checklist was the Boeing B-17. On the first B-17 flight, the airplane crashed after takeoff because the pilot forgot to remove the elevator lock, not allowing him to pitch the nose up. After this tragedy, checklists were born to help prevent accidents like this one from occurring. Even after thousands of hours of flying, pilots still use checklists to ensure that critical tasks will not be forgotten. Checklist usage is a critical aspect of flying, so it is important to work on this skill from day one. Pilots who tend to overlook checklist usage are prone to become more complacent and make more mistakes, which could create an unsafe situation. For the first half of your private pilot training here at Embry-Riddle, you will complete the checklist using the read-do method. What this means is that for each checklist, each item will be read out loud and then physically done. However, after completing your first solo, from there on out, you will be expected to complete the checklist in a do-verify manner. Much like the airlines, this method requires the pilots to do a flow essentially completing the checklist from memory and then pulling out their checklist to verify that nothing has been omitted. The checklists for the aircraft at Embry-Riddle are broken up into different sections. The first section is called the normal checklist. This section includes the procedures that are completed on the day-to-day -day flights, including pre-flight, engine start, before taxi, before takeoff, and more. After the normal checklist section is the emergency checklist section. As the name states, this section is used during emergency operations such as an engine failure or a fire burning in the airplane. Following the emergency checklist is the abnormal checklist, which includes procedures for situations that do not usually arise in the airplane. Some of these include what to do with a rough running engine, electrical issues, or other equipment failures that would not constitute an emergency. The last part of the checklist is the supplement section, which contains some helpful information like V-speeds of the airplane, cruise performance charts, how to prime the engine, and more. From small airplanes like the Cessna to the state-of-the-art Boeing 787, checklist usage is absolutely essential to ensure a safe flight. For more information on the checklist and the Embry-Riddle checklist policies, please take a look at the current version of the SOPM.